This lesson will be about polynomials. A polynomial is the sum of many monomials. Each monomial in a polynomial is called a term of the polynomial. It is often useful to define something called the degree of a polynomial. First though, we should look at the definition of the degree of a monomial. which is the sum of the exponents of all of the variables. So if we had something like 42, then the degree would equal 0, because essentially 42 has no variable or is equal to 42 times the variable to the power of 0. If we had something like 3 times x squared, then the degree would be 2 because the only variable is x and x exponent is 2. If we had something like 5 times p times q squared times m to the third, then our degree would be 1 plus 2, plus 3, or 6, because the variables are p, q, and m, and their exponents are 1, 2, and 3, respectively. Now, we can look at the definition of the degree of a polynomial and say that it is equal to the maximum of the degree of its terms. Now let's look at adding polynomials. In order to add polynomials, you have to combine like terms. This means to add the coefficients of terms that have the same variable part. So, for example, something like 5xy and 6xy could be combined because they both have xy as their variable part. However, something like 5xy squared and 6xy could not be added because xy squared is not the same as xy. So let's simplify something like 10x squared plus 3x minus 4 plus 5y squared minus 7x squared plus 5x plus 1. Let's look for all of the like terms. We have x squared here and an x squared here. So we can combine these two terms to get a 10 minus 7 times x squared or 3x squared. Then we can look and we see that there are two terms here that have x as their variable part. So we can combine those two to make 8x. And then we have a minus 4 and a 1 which both have no variable part and therefore can be combined to make a minus 3. And finally we have a 5y squared, which has no like terms in this case. 
So we can just rewrite that. Now let's look at how to multiply polynomials. In general, multiplying polynomials involves using the distributive property. So, for example, if we wanted to multiply something like 25 minus a squared plus bc by a plus 2b. We would do that by distributing first the 25, then multiplying that by the entire second term, taking the a squared, multiplying that by the entire second term, and doing the same with bc. Then we can distribute that one more time so we end up with 25a plus 50b minus a cubed minus 2a squared b plus abc plus 2b squared times c. And now we can look to see if there are any like terms that we can combine. In this case, there are none, so we are done multiplying. There is a special case that occurs when we multiply two binomials. A binomial is a polynomial with two terms. So this can be something like x squared plus xy. When this happens, we can use a special formula to make things easier. Let's say that a represents our first term, b represents our second term, c is another term, and d is another term. So each of these individually is a binomial. We want to multiply them together. We can use an acronym called FOIL to help us do this. FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, and last. So first refers to the first two terms of each of the binomials. So in this case that's A and C. So this equals a times c. Outer refers to the outer terms of the binomials, so this is a and d. Inner then refers to b and c. And last refers to b and d. Then all we have to do is add up these terms together. So that's AC plus AD plus BC plus BD. And that gives us our product that we are looking for. These two are equal. So we can have an example of this. Let's say we have 5A plus B times 3A plus B. So first we have 5A and 3A. So multiplying those together gives us 15A squared. Outer we have 5A and B, so that gives us 5AB. Inner we have B and 3A. So that gives us 3ab. And then last, we have a b and a b. So that's just b squared. And then we can combine like terms. And so our final product is equal to 15a squared 
plus 8ab plus b squared.